Okay. All right. Let's remember, let's remember that family in prayer. Let's all stand together tonight, and we're going to receive our evening offering. Our ushers will come forward. We will receive the evening offering. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God's blessings on the offering and ask God's blessings on the service as well and uh, pray that God's will will be done in the service tonight. Brother James Bell, will you lead us in prayer tonight?
together tonight. We're going to sing Amazing Grace. The choir's going to go down. Sing Amazing Grace with us. Shake hands with those that are around you tonight. Page number 57, Amazing Grace. Sister Pam's going to come around and sing for us tonight, and I requested what a friend we have in Jesus. I'm not sure that's what she's singing, but that's what I requested. But uh, you pray for her as she sings, and then Brother Trey's going to come preach, and you pray for him as well. I always do what I'm told. <laughs> I love the Lord, and it's just good to be here, and... Um, I'm so tickled about um, Vision to Victory drama skit team, and those of you that were here this afternoon when we were rehearsing, you just got just a little taste, Jamie, Miss Pat, of what, and Miss Shirley, and um, I just, I hope that everybody will be here next Sunday because it's very powerful, and uh, God was here, and I believe that he was glorified, and that's, that's what we're doing it for, is for his glory. And um, I'm just so thankful for my church. I love my church, and uh, I'm thankful that I'm free to worship here, and that, that nobody stares at me when I cry, and that nobody stares at me when I raise my hand and praise the Lord, because I'm free to do that. And that's the way it's supposed If we have freedom in Christ, we have freedom in Him, and I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for this church, and I love y'all, and I know you love me, and I thank you for that. So I want to do this song, and y'all just worship what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to
my life. I can look back and see the times that uh, things were not too good and prayer changed things. Uh, we still got a lot to pray for today. You know, there's a lot of people sick and uh, in the hospital and different things, but we can still pray. Y'all continue to pray for my nephew Austin. He's still in the hospital. Talked to my sister on the way to church tonight and said he'll probably be there a couple more days. So uh, you pray for him uh, when you pray, but not only him, but you know there's a uh, Collier Gray uh, community been praying for, and then Andy Grace. I hear that she's in remission, so praise God for that. I tell you, the prayer changes thing. And as the song she's singing there, what a friend we've got in Jesus. Tell you what, I have no greater friend than one I have in Jesus. I love my wife, and she's my best friend. But I tell you what, Jesus is the greatest one. I tell you, Jesus can change things. Turn away in your Bibles to the book of Judges, chapter number 16. Judges, chapter number 16. It is a joy to be here today. I miss Brother Barry when he's not here. So you pray for him that he'll just have a great time on vacation, just get to rest and relax and uh, uh, just have a great time. So you pray for him and his family when you pray. But, but I do love the Lord, and I thank God for his great mercy and uh, the things he's done for me in my life. He's blessed me, I believe, far more than he's blessed anybody else. That's the way I feel. I really do. I feel like I'm just blessed beyond marriage. But in the book of Judges, chapter number 16, I'll start reading in verse number 4. Some familiar scripture here about a guy by the name of Samson. Okay, we, we've heard about Samson some and the things that he did. So you pray for us for a little while. But the Bible says in Judges, chapter 16, verse number 4, it says, It came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came to her and said to her, Entice him and see wherein his great strength lies, and by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him to afflict him. And we will give thee every one of us eleven hundred pieces of silver. And Delilah said unto Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lies, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. Let's pray. Father, as we bow this evening. God, I thank you for the privilege of prayer. I thank you for just being able to come to you with our needs and make a petition made known to thee. God, I thank you for the great reports we've heard of people being healed and, and the sick feeling better. God, I pray that you prepare the hearts and souls to receive thy word this evening. God, that the word go out and touch each heart. God, if there's a need here today, you'll meet the need. Lord, if there's one here, it's out of your will, you'll bring them home to thee. God, if there's one here that's lost, that you'd save them before it's everlasting too late. God, I pray that you give us anointing afresh tonight. Lord, that we might just speak thy words to Lord. You'll just send the message we all stand in need of today. We ask all these things in our wonderful name. Amen. I want to preach tonight upon this thought, Samson, where does your great strength come from? Now, as she was singing the song about prayer, I thought about prayer is a lot of, is, is got some power in prayer. You know, there's songs we talk about it's got power in prayer, but as I begin to think about it, and, and Samson had this great strength, and, and uh, you know, his mother had prayed that God would send him a child, and God did, but you think about us today. Where does our strength come from? As we look at people uh, and different people's lives, we look at them and say, man, that's a strong Christian. What really makes them a strong Christian? We can analyze that and and see some things that's in their life. They just didn't wake up one morning and say, hey, I'm going to be a strong Christian today. No, it takes time, Brother Ray. It takes time to get that. I believe uh, being a strong Christian requires us uh, uh, praying, first off. It requires us uh, uh, really getting on our face to God and saying, God, give me the strength that I need. Not only that, but it requires us getting into God's Word. Uh, we got to get in God's Word, uh, what God's Word's got to say, that, that we might draw strength. You know, the Bible says that, you know, we got to kind of eat that Word. I, I said that, uh, uh, I believe it was this morning for Children's Church. I said, we got to eat the Bible. And uh, I believe one of the uh, Tara's little boys said, Trey, you can't eat the Bible. And I just laughed. I said, well, you know what I mean. We got to digest that word. What's that word digest mean? 
me. So it just went on from there. But we got to take the word of God and, and we got to read it and apply it to our lives and, our, and, and live that word of God if we're going to be a strong Christian. Uh, last night we had to sing in here and they, they sung the song, Old Ship of Zion. It brought memories back to my grandmother, Grandmother Chambers. And, and she loved to sing that song, Old Ship of Zion. And, and as Miss Evelyn sitting there singing it, I, I can just picture my grandmother singing that. And, and when it got to the part, uh, uh, you know, said, uh, step on board, she'd say, Lucille. Uh, the Lord would say, Lucille, uh, step on board. And, and I look at my grandmother and I think she was a strong Christian. Why? Hey, Amen. Because she loved God and she lived for God and she taught us how to love God. She taught us how to live for God. And, and she ever, no, no matter where she went, no matter where she was at, uh, uh, she was a Christian uh, uh, day in and day out. And I believe she was a strong Christian. I tell you, God's saying through a lot of things. But, but as I think about the scripture tonight about Samson, he had great strength. And uh, the Bible talked about uh, earlier on, and you can look in chapters 14 and 15 and here in 16, it, it kind of gives you some history of it and things. But uh, basically his mother had prayed uh, that God would send her a son. An angel of God came down and spoke to her uh, and to her husband said, I'm going to give you a son uh, and he's going to be a Nazarite. And now you think about that word Nazarite, what's that mean? I believe that's concentrated uh, to God. That's somebody sold out totally uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and there's some things that went along with that with the Nazarite vow. There was three things uh, that, that really went along with that. The first thing it was was the vineyard. And now the Bible talked about, said, you know, do not eat anything that, that pertaineth to the vine, uh, the grave, and stuff like that. So uh, make uh, made from concentrate. Uh, uh, you know, we've got what is saying right here. said, you don't want to go out and drink those things. You want to keep yourself concentrated. You want to keep yourself holy. Uh, you want to keep yourself separated. Uh, and, amen. That whenever you've got the power and the strength that uh, that you've got it there. And when it comes time to use it, you know that you've got it there. So I thought about that Nazarite vow in the vineyard. And, and so often, uh, 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 we just don't want to do that. Uh, so often, we just don't want to uh, be concentrated to the Lord. Uh, but the Bible talked about there, you know, the name means an uh, act of concentration oneself to Jehovah. Hey, man, uh, uh, putting out all these unth the unfavorable things out. Hey, man, and abstain abstaining from all these things that uh, kind of hinder us, that gets us weak. And, and I thought about, you know, what some things that gets us weak? And, and you can look in the Bible and you can see. And, and in our nation we live in today, so many things are acceptable. But, but you can start naming things. You think about what would he think, you know, if I was out drinking and, and doing drugs and all, that would make me a weak Christian. Uh, that would make me very weak. Now, I, I brought something today to kind of show you, and, and don't, don't, don't laugh at me too bad, okay? Uh, but, but you think about it. I got a bottle right here. No, it's not wine, okay? It's not wine. It is sparkling red grape juice, and if you ever taste it, you wouldn't drink it again. <laughs> Amen. It's awful. I mean, it is awful. But I thought about that. And, you know, the Bible said for Samson, don't get around that stuff. You know, don't go into the vineyards there. Don't, don't get involved with it. But so often, us as Christians, uh, we kind of dibble out in sin. Uh, Samson was going by there and he seen the vineyard. Uh, and if he had did what he should have did, he would have stayed clear of it. But instead, he kind of walked over to the edge. You know, that's like telling a kid, uh, uh, you're around a swimming pool. And you say, don't get near the edge of the pool. You know, you might as well say, just go ahead and jump in and get it over with. Hey man, but they'll get close to the edge and say, don't do that, don't do that, and they don't do that, and they'll get close to the edge and won't look over. I've been guilty of this, uh, uh, not planning on going swimming, stand on a diving board and, and start bouncing up and down. I'm not jumping in, but you're bouncing up and down. Hey man, and before long, you've done uh, lost your bounce and boom, there you go off into the pool. Hey man, you probably did that also, you have. Uh, but you think about it, he said, stay away from it. Uh, so what he was saying, I need to stay away from this sin. I know that it's sin. There's some things that you and I I know this is a sin, but we want to get close to it. We'll say, well, I'm not going to drink a lot of it. I'm just going to drink a little bit of it. So what you'll do then, you'll take the glass, and i got a nice, fine glass right here. I'm not going to pour it in here. But what you do, I'm just going to take one little sip of it. And you'll pour a little bit. Well, that's not going to hurt me too bad, okay? Hey, Amen. But, but then, well, that was so good. You know, sin is good. You realize that. We enjoy sin, it seems like. But it gets us in trouble, and it makes us weak, and it tears us down. And before long, you've done drink it all up, and you've got out in sin before you even realize What's taking place in your life? Samson did that. He did that. What do you mean? Well, the Bible said there that, that he went out. He went out to the vineyard, you know, where he wasn't supposed to be at. And then finally, uh, you know, he went on a little bit further. The Bible said there that, that he met a lion on the way. 
And I thought about it in my next point here. You know, where does strength come from? And talking about the Nazarite vow of the vessel. You know, we're the vessel of God. The Bible said that, you know, we're the ones that the Holy Spirit lives within us. And we need to have a vessel that's clean. The scripture said God will not dwell in an unclean vessel. So I want to be a vessel that God wants to fill up. I want to be a vessel that God is pleased with. And, you know, if this cup was not clean, I probably wouldn't drink out of it. Amen. Same way with us. If we're not clean, how can God use us? Do you see what I'm saying there? But we need to be clean. But I think about that vessel. Hey man, your valor, your fighting, not to be around or touch the dead bodies. And now what he said right here that the Bible said that, you know, that uh, Samson, he went over and, and over that place and he seen a lion, the lion come roaring at him. And uh, uh, Samson was, uh, he has a man of valor, he had the strength. He just took the, the jawbone of a donkey and he killed, uh, the, I mean, he just killed that lion. I mean, just killed him and dead right there. But you know, the Bible talked about in the Nazarite vow him not to get around the dead things. Oh, he got on home, didn't say nothing about him. And a little, a little bit later, you know, the Bible said that, you know, after a time he returned to take, you know, this woman and he turned aside to the carcass of the lion and behold, there's a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. Amen. He knew right then he needed to stay clear. But what did he do? He, he got into it. He got into the honey. How many of y'all like honey? I do too. I like honey. I like sorghum syrup a little bit better. But, you know, I like honey too. And I brought my honey jar right here also to kind of show you. Now, Brother Jerry, don't get offended, okay? <laughs> if I'd have had some of your honey, I'd brought it. Is he here tonight? There he is. Okay. This honey is not as good as yours, I guarantee you that. It's a store bought. You know, what gets me is you can buy local honey everywhere. Amen. I believe that's just labeled local honey. But, but the honey right here, well, how did the honey come about? The Bible said the lime was there and the swarm of bees got in there and they built a home, built a nest. You know, that's kind of what we do sometimes. We get over there and sin and we just set up camp. Or we just said, I'm going to stay here a little while and I'm going to stay over here in this sin just to enjoy myself. And so what Samson did, he went in there and he got some of the honey out of it and he carried it to his parents. But he didn't tell them exactly where he got it from. Kind of what we do. We'll double out in sin, and we don't want nobody to find out about it. We don't want anybody to know where we've been or what we did when we got there, but we come back, and we just, we just can't help but tell somebody about it. You know, how, you know how it is with sin? You know how if you steal something, you can't wait to tell somebody that you stole it, and you say, don't tell nobody I stole it? You know, that's how a lot of the crooks get caught there. But we go out in sin, and we got to come back, and we want to tell somebody about it. Well, Samson did the same thing. He come back and he shared his honey with his family there. And, uh, and then finally it come down to a time there that uh, he, he'd go and get married. And, you know, he had a bad life there. I mean, he had a bad choice on picking women. I'm telling you, no other way to say that. He, is, he just couldn't pick them. All right? Uh, uh, he needed somebody. He needed to go to uh, uh, eHarmony.com or something like that. <laughs> Because he just didn't know what he was doing. Amen. But what happened here, he got there, and I guess you kind of say it like a wedding party or whatever you want to call it there. And uh, he was flirting with sin. He told them, said, you know, uh, if you can answer this riddle of mine, uh, uh, I'll give you this. And said, if you don't, you got to give me that. So here's what he said. He told them, said, uh, here's a riddle. Out of the eater came forth meat. Out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound the riddle. So they couldn't figure out what was going on. They couldn't understand. Out of the eater come forth meat, and out of the strong come forth sweetness. They couldn't figure it out. I mean, they examined, they thought about it, and they thought about it. And then the woman he was, he was with here, they went to her. Hey, man, they went to her and said, can you find out what he's talking about? Well, to start off, he didn't tell her and all that, but she kept on and on and on. Sin does that to us. I mean, it just still picks at us and gnaws at us and just keeps on and on and on and on. And finally, we give in and we break uh, to sin. So he told her what it was. Uh, and, and, you know, the man of the city came to her and, and, uh, and found out exactly what it was. said, what is sweeter than honey, what is stronger than a lion? That was the answer to the real there. And he was kind of like, man, I can't believe she betrayed me like that. But she did. You know, sin will betray you very quickly. It will. The one that you trusted in so much, it will betray you so quickly. So sin will get us. And as I look on a little bit further, I think about, you know, where did the strength come from? He was a Nazarite. He, you know, had the vineyard. He would stay away from that stuff. You know, uh, he was not to be around the dead stuff, uh, the dead animals and all. And then right there, uh, and the last thing he talked about was his hair. Now, I don't have a lot of hair because I got clippers. 
And the reason sometimes is because it turns gray. I ain't figured out why. That is, and sometimes I need glasses. But, but here's the next thing about the Nazarite vow. He was a Nazarite from his youth. And he said, no razor shall touch my hair. And uh, as we think about this, a Nazarite, if you've been to the Amish country, you can probably tell an Amish a mile off, can't you? Yeah, you can tell the beard and, and, and the sideburns and all that stuff. You can kind of tell them a mile off, kind of like duck commanders. You can probably tell them two miles off, okay, with a long beard and everything and, and, and all that thing. But you see, he said, a razor should not touch my hair. Now, he didn't, and later on in the scripture here, a few, verse, a few chapters down, it gets in this. Uh, but I want you to think about there's a visible difference between the world and the church. There should be. There should be a visible difference between a Christian and a non-Christian. Okay? What do you mean? Well, you just think about it. If you're, if you're talking with somebody, you should be able to tell the difference between a Christian and a lost person. And Brother Shane mentioned the other day, you know, we expect the world to live like the church. Hey, man, they're lost, uh, but they're not going to live like the church. But us Christians, we should live like God. We should live uh, like a church. We should live. And that's where we get our strength there. Uh, but, you know, so often uh, somebody will come up and they'll begin to talk, and you can't tell the difference if they're a Christian or not. But you know what? I believe whenever Samson come up, they could tell a difference because of the way he looked on the outside. Now, you know, the, the fads have changed and styles have changed over the years and all that, but I believe what's on the inside is going to come out. I believe it will. I believe it's going to come out. So the Bible talked about the long, uncut hair of a Nazarite was a symbol of strength, okay, and it was distinguishing from the living and the dead and was worn in honor of the Lord as a sign that he belonged to the Lord and dedicated himself to the service of God. Think about that. The Nazarite vow, he, you know, not touch the wine, uh, not touch the dead carcass, and don't cut your hair, okay? Now, you can't imagine that. And, and then so often, we, we just want to dibble out and see, you know, Shane, his, his head's a little bit a little bit uh, shiny up there. He cuts his hair sometimes. But, but I want to kind of illustrate a little bit for you. Brother Shane, will you come up, please? This right here is a big strong. What's your name again? Samson. Samson. Sam, this is Samson right here. Okay, he don't look like Samson, does he? Okay, so let's flex your muscles now. Is that all you got? <laughs> My little pinky's got more muscles than that. There you go. All right, so now can you imagine what he would look like with her? <laughs> Long hair. You can fit it on there. I don't know if they're laughing at you or laughing with you. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. A beautiful thing to have hair. So this right here is Samson. All right, he's big and strong. And, and uh, he's got some problems, though. He, <laughs> he can't pick women too good. All right. So in chapter 16 of the chapter I just read there, uh, the Bible says that he met this woman named Delilah. My uncle Billy, y'all know Billy Chambers? He had two pit bulldogs that were named Samson and Delilah. That was crazy. It had, had two dogs, Samson and Light. That was the funniest thing. But let me tell you what happened here. Okay? He had the long hair. He was strong. He was, he was, he was manly and all. He had power with God. Me and you can have power with God if we want it. Okay? So he had the power of God. But he had some weaknesses. And me and you have weaknesses. We do. And I don't have to name them. You can probably name them yourself. We got weaknesses. But the Bible said that, that he got with Delilah and they began to talk. And, and the Philistines like, uh, Delilah, I want you to find out from Samson where his strength lies. Hey man, the devil kind of comes in. It says there, and it came to pass afterward, he loved a woman in the valley there. His name was Lila. And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, where thy great strength cometh, uh, and wherewith thou mightest bound, uh, be, uh, be bound to afflict thee. So here it is, Delilah is talking to Samson. You know, she loves him. Well, he thinks she loves him. And uh, he, she's saying, Where's your strength lie at? Okay, the first thing he says, Samson said to her, If they bind me with seven green whists, Bow strings uh, that were never dry, then I will be weak and be as another man. So let me see if I can tie him up, okay? I got some little bit of string in here somewhere. All right, so I got some string, not very big, and uh, I, you know he might can he might can get out of it. I don't know. He might he might be pretty strong. So what happened? He kind of took a nap. We kind of go to sleep on God sometimes, don't we? We do. Yeah, we just kind of get relaxed on God, and we just don't do it. So what she did, she took those things, and she bound him up. And she thought, I got him now. I've done found out his secret. 
and he goes to sleep. You don't lay down there. You know, you can lay down. He's, he's asleep there, whatever. All right, he's, he's, he's asleep. And then finally, she said, Samson, Samson, the Philistines are coming, the Philistines are coming. And he gets up and he breaks it. You see how strong he is? He's like, all right, who are they at? Who are they at? And they were scared and they kind of run off. And, and she's like, you lied to me. You liar. I can't believe. I thought you loved me. I thought you cared for me. And she kept on and on and on and on. But you see, Samson still had his strength. Me and you today, we can dibble out in sin. And we may still have some strength, but if we're not careful, that sin is going to catch up with us and we're going to be weak. Okay? You can try to hide it, but you know what? God knows everything about you. Next thing it was, uh, uh, you know, and notice how he kind of gets closer and closer. Like I said, the edge of the pool. We get closer and closer out in sin. Next thing, I said, if they bind me fast with new rope, got a brand new rope here, uh, that were never occupied, uh, then I shall be weak and be as another man. Okay, so he goes to sleep again. Okay, binds it up with a rope and all this. I already put a square knot in it so he really can't get out. Okay, there we go. We got it in there good. So he goes to sleep. Then he's fast asleep, and Delilah says, all right, he's asleep now. He said, y'all come in and get him. So here he goes, the Philistines are coming, the Philistines are coming. And he wakes, that was pretty quick right there, wasn't it? He was pretty, pretty strong, and he, and he breaks those ropes out, and he stands up, and the other people are scared. Like, you know, I, I thought you said these ropes would bind them, but you know what? There's Satan to try to bind me and you, but if we keep in touch with God, we still got strength with God, and we can still have strength with God. Yeah, we're going to all sin. We're all going to make mistakes. We're going to say things and do things we shouldn't do, but you know what? We need to stay right there with God. We need to stay with God. There's none of us above a reproach. There's none of us above sin. Every one of us could fall over into sin tonight or tomorrow. But Samson here, he was dibbling out in sin. Okay, next thing it said, uh, and, and Delilah's talking to him and says, Samson, I thought you loved me. I thought you cared for me. Why are you lying to me like this? And, and uh, he said, uh, and he asked, she asked him again, if thou uh, weavest the locks of my head uh, with the web. You know, I'd be weak. Now, let's see here. If I can weave his hair. Turn on around a little bit. We got any beauticians in there? <laughs> now, I'll try to weave them in lots of whatever it said there. Okay, we got them all. Hey, you got a ponytail look good here now, don't you? All right. So, <laughs> he goes to sleep. Then all of a sudden, you know, you notice how he got a little closer to the truth. How he got a little closer where his strength lies. He comes in and, and the lie said, uh, Samson, the Philistines are here, the Philistines are here. And he wakes up and he's as strong as ever. And, and, and I, oh no, he's, this guy's getting mad now. He's strong. He's gone. And he runs them off. And, and she is so furious because he had lied to her his three times. And the Bible said there, and, he, and she said to him, How canest thou say, I love thee? When thy heart is not with me, thou hast mocked me these three times and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lies. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. Now that verse right there, that's a rough verse. You know, have you ever had something begin to tempt you and it comes back tomorrow, it comes back the next day, it comes back the next day and you're like, Get behind me, Satan. I don't have anything to do with you. And, and it comes back and forth day in, day out, and you get tired. You get weak and you get run down. Why do we get like that? I don't know, but, but it, we got to stay in God's word. We got to stay on our face in prayer if we're going to stay strong because uh, he was a strong person, but he, he ended up getting weak. So the Bible said then that, you know, she said that, and it came to pass when she pressed him daily with the words and urged him uh, so that his soul was based in death. Then he told her all his heart. He just poured his guts out. Said, uh, told him his heart and said to her, Thou hast not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I had been shaven, then my strength will be gone from me, and I shall become weak and be like other men. So he just told his heart to Delilah, this wicked woman, okay? This crazy, wicked woman, he told his heart to her. And that's what we do sometimes. We fall into those traps the devil's got for us. We fall into those tricks he's got for us, and those snares that he's got for us. And, and I don't know, you know, all of us does that, but you, we got to realize, hey, we got to look for it and be aware of it. Three times she'd already tricked him. And that third time there was getting closer to the truth there. So he goes to sleep. Go to sleep, Shane. All right, he goes to sleep. And she calls the Philistines this time and said, look, I got it. I got the answer. I got the answer this time. And it said there, never a razor touched my hair. 
okay? So, <laughs> pretty sharp. See, it's like, okay, it's pretty sharp, right? Y'all take my word for it, okay? So she told him, she said, look, never raise her, touch his hair. See, if you come in and shave his hair, then he'll be weak as other men does. So they slipped in. I'm not going to cut him, okay? <laughs> he's watching. They come, and he's asleep. I can't imagine my hair being cut while I'm asleep. Can you? Uh, he can't either. So <laughs> he's laying there on the lap of the lion, and she's probably just caressing and all that stuff. And, and, and they come in, they cut his hair. <laughs> so I can get it cut off there. Right. Okay? He got it cut off, and I. He's probably still asleep. He got the hair cut. I said, look what I got, look what I got. All right. Then, all of a sudden, she says, Samson, Samson, the Philistines are here. And he wakes up. And what's wrong with him? He has no strength. He gets up and he's like, all right, I'm going to do something. <sighs> no strength, no strength. Man, that had to be sad. He had got up three times before, shook it off. We can do that. You know, sin can kind of try to get us. We can get up and shake it off. But finally, if we're not careful, that sin is going to grab us. Amen. It's going to bind us. And when we get up, we can't shake it off. So the Bible said then they bound him up. Amen. They bound him up. And what did they do next? Anybody know what they did next? They led him away. They led him away to the prison. The Bible said they led him away. He was grinding meal day in and day out. They also put his eyes out. I don't want to do that, okay? All right, so they led him away to the prison. <laughs> hey, man, you can sit down there now. Here's your rope to play with. Okay? Uh, so they led him out to the prison, and he had to work. They, they, cut, they put his eyes out. Boy, he had to be sad. He finally got caught up in sin. And, you know, I've always been in church all my life, but you know what? I could fall off into sin tomorrow just like anybody else could. The other night I had to sing it, and and the brother talked about that, that he got on a, a pain medication and all that. You know, sometimes us as Christians, we up here in our Christian bubble, and like, I'd never do that. I never would do a sin like, I, I'm, I'm above that. But you know what? All of us are human. All of us are human. Okay, we're all vulnerable to sin. Okay? Satan is going to find that weak point in our life, and that's where he's going to attack us at. And if we're not careful, it's going to happen. She said, the Philistine be upon Samson awoke out of sleep and said, I go out as other times do, and, and shook himself. And was not the Lord departed from him. But the Philistines took him, put his eyes out, and brought him down to Gaza, and bound him with fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. Howbeit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. Now, that's the part I like, okay? That's the part I like. Just because you sin, just because you did something ungodly, that don't mean you can't make things right and get back in church. Amen? Amen. You can go out and do things, but what happens, us as Christians, we want to look at somebody else and say, look what, I've heard people say, I remember what they did 15 years ago. I wouldn't let them walk up on the stage and sing for nothing. Hey, I tell you what, everybody in here can sin, but we ask God to forgive us. Hey, man, God makes us clean. He puts us back up where we need to be, and then we can serve God. Hey, Amen. I've heard people say, well, I wouldn't let that old person preach for nothing. Why? Because they did something 15 years ago, 10 years ago. Hey, I'm here to tell you today, uh, David was a man after God's own heart, and he sinned, he had a man killed, but God still loved him. Hey, man, we need to forgive like God does. We do, but so often we hold a grudge, and we don't want to do that, and we think we're above those sins. But, you know, that honey is sweet, and you don't want to dip into that honey, that sweetness of that. Uh, you know, that one drink, it may be great, and you want to dibble into that. And all these things will let Satan come into our life, uh, and we think we're above everybody. But what happened with Samson here? He got caught in his sin, and you've not got caught yet. Amen? He got caught. Some people are still hiding. What happens? You know, we've got a breaking point. You know, I'm, I'm trying to close now here in a few minutes, but what will be the breaking point in your life? The straw that breaks the camel's back. The vineyard. You know, things that we put in our body, okay? Drinks, drugs, alcohol, food. So many things we can do to tear us down, okay? And, and you know, the, the popular things is, is alcohol and drugs and that type of stuff. But, you know, we need to be careful. We need to be careful because Satan can get us in a heartbeat. He can get us just like that. Just like that. If we're not careful, we can do that. So we have to be watching out for that. Our vessel, things that we touch, things that we surround ourselves with, our lustful acts, 
uh, our friends, our music, our movies, and material possessions, our hobbies, works, and, and things that will kill you spiritually. Things that will kill you spiritually. There's some things that may be a sin to me that kill me spiritually, but probably wouldn't hurt you. What do you mean? Well, you know, if I decide, well, I want a boat. Everybody likes to have a boat, okay? But when I put that boat between me and God, that's wrong, amen? Okay, Lord, give me a boat. All right, God gives me a boat, and I said, well, I'm just going to go to the lake this Sunday and next Sunday and next Sunday and, and just use the blessing. God bless me. That would be a sin. You see what I'm saying? We can let these things hinder us and, and get us out of God's will. The things that we listen to, the things that we watch. I, I'm going to tell you what, I got convicted one time by the music I listened to. When I started dating Michelle, I listened to country music. Hey, man, she thought, Lord, this guy is, I can't believe it's a preacher listening to country music. She did. She was raised up in a Christian home, went to a Christian school, went to a Christian college. Her daddy pastored a church, and I mean, she just couldn't imagine somebody listening to country music. Well, I listened to it and listened to it. Well, about, I guess, eight years ago, might have been a little on that, I was at a Awana conference, and the guy was preaching about music and influence and all that. And I tell you what, I got convicted. I did. I got convicted because when he brought out the things that the music said and was insinuating, I was embarrassed. I was. I was totally embarrassed. And, and I began to listen to the word. He said, even the beats of it. You know, you can change the words to the music, but the music is still the same. And you're going to remember the original things of it. So I thought, Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to stop doing that. So I, I, I left that Saturday and I didn't listen. I, didn't, I quit listening to country music. Amen. And God convicted me of that. Why? I mean, because I felt like it was wrong and it got my mind all bogged down with worldly things and it made me think about worldly things and worldly acts. But now I listen to Christian music and it's got my mind on God. More often, I can go down the road and think about God and ain't got to worry about cheating on my wife and, and, and drinking and drugs and all that stuff. I'm thinking about God and that music lifts me up instead of tears me down. Amen. That's what I'm saying. Things that we watch on TV, things that we look at, and all them things, the people we surround ourselves with. Have you ever been around somebody that cussed like a sailor? Yeah, I have, I have. Hey, man, I've been around somebody that cussed like a sailor, and when I leave, 30 minutes later, I'm thinking about what they said, and I'm praying to God I don't repeat what they said. Hey, man, you know what I'm saying? I talk to myself sometimes. Hey, man, I answer myself sometimes. Is that okay? Yeah. The problem is when you go, huh, what'd you say? That's when you got a problem, when you're talking to yourself, okay? Some of y'all just got that. But what I'm saying, we need to surround ourselves with God. We need to put those good things of God within us. And think about the last thing here, you know, the vitality. Giving up on Christ. Some of you have given testimony that you've walked away on God. You have. I've heard some of those testimonies. Hey, man, I've never just totally walked away on God. Some of you have. But you know what? I'm glad you come back. <laughs> Boy, I'm glad you come back. I'm excited that you come back. You know, some people get hurt. They just give up and leave. I don't ever want to go to church again because this and this and this. And we just give up on God, give up on your family, give up on everything else. And you just, just, just get, do that. But you know what? Victory is in Jesus. Victory is in Jesus. Samson called unto the Lord in verse 28. And I'm closing. Samson called unto the Lord and said, Lord, O oh God, Remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee only this once. O oh God, that I may uh, be at, at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. Here's what happened. He was put in prison. He was grinding on the millstone. They brought him out to be sport one day. They was going to make fun of him. But you know what? As I said a while ago, how bit the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven. You don't have to stay in sin. You don't. You don't have to stay down there on the bottom, okay? His hair began to grow back, and finally it grew back. They didn't realize it, I don't believe. I don't believe they realized that. <clears throat> but they seen the hair growing, but they didn't realize his strength. And he got in there, and they was making fun of him, going to make sport of him, and he prayed to God. He didn't ask the other people. He prayed to God. He said, can you just let me touch this pillar here? Hold on to this pillar right here that I might feel them. And all the people was up above him in the Colosseum and everything. And he prayed to God and said, God, just give me the strength one more time. When's the last time you cried out to God and said, God, I need strength one more time? I'm, I, I, I'm in my sin and I want to get out of it. And he cried and he prayed. His hair grew back and he prayed. And when he did that, the Bible said he just kind of pushed the pillars down. 
and the, the walls just come to falling down. The floors came falling down. He died in this instance right here, but he killed more that day than he did any time before. See, the thing about it, God restores us. God gives our strength back if we come back to him. But, you know, there's no need of us staying way out there and sin. Come back home to God. You know, uh, he, he, he was going there, and Samson fills the porch of the pillar, and he prayed with great power and great strength. But you know what? We've got our victory today. No matter what you've done, you may have lived like Samson, but you know what? God still loves you. He wants to restore you if you'll come back home to him. Amen. He, he loves us today. So you think about where is your strength at? Where is your strength at? And I, I brought out some things about Samson right there, but I believe today our great strength is in God. It's in prayer. It's in his word and living for him. Let's pray, then we'll come with a verse of song. Father, as we bow this evening, God, I thank you for your blessings. Lord, I thank you for your scripture. I thank you, Lord, for all these people here tonight and being so attentive. Lord, I pray that you'd just touch the hearts and God and meet the needs there in these people's lives. Lord, for some here today that, like Samson, just kind of uh, uh, went out in sin, I pray that you'd bring them home to thee. God, some here just kind of given up, I pray that you'd help them. Lord, just return home to thee. God, some need to be restored. I pray that you restore them. God, there may be some here today that's lost that don't know you in a free pardon of sin. I pray that the Holy Spirit would deal with them, convict them of their sin. Let them realize they need to be saved and they'll come to these altars and ask you to come to their heart and life and save them. God, we love you today. You're a great God. We thank you for your many blessings. And we'll be careful to give you the praise for it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's stand to our feet.